now is really do or die whether I find out if I have made a financial mistake or if I can make some money on this so guess we'll go ahead and get this motor torn off of here hope that nothing else is broke on the inside hey guys what's going on welcome back to the channel I'm Jason and as you can see today I'm in the garage because it's been getting a little too hot to be working outside lately so um, thanks for checking out the channel and don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll go see what we're gonna get into today so this is my uh, skag zero turn I picked up uh, just a little bit ago and uh, it's 25 degrees outside right now so don't worry cut mowing seasons right around the corner but it's uh, skag tiger cat um, pretty nice little one owner machine um, I think it has just under 500 hours on it uh, 52 inch deck tiger cat it's a 2009 model um, overall a solid little clean machine and uh, the guy I got it from said you know it needed a motor and so I was like okay and I've already done a little bit of investigative work to see what was going on and sure enough it does need some engine repair on it um, this uh, this cylinder here the left side one is not moving correctly um, it you know it's got a broke connecting rod so we're gonna have to take the engine off take it all apart put a connecting rod in it now the easiest way really to diagnose whether you know you have a stuck valve open or a bent push rod or something or you know a broken connecting rod is really to take out both of the plugs and stick a screwdriver in there and see if anything moves so i already did that i took this plug out and stuck a screwdriver and it just pushed straight in and uh you know if you were to do it on this side that still is good you know you'd have a lot of resistance and you'd see the flywheel turn up here so i already looked into it like why is such a low hour mower you know and this motor by the way the Kohler command 27 that's what this is it's it's a great motor you know these are one of the best motors that you could buy on a lawnmower in like the last 25 years it's just a great all overall motor um put them on all kinds of mowers they're just uh have great you know you can service them really well you can re they're very rebuildable and uh lately they've came out with uh, the command efi electronic fuel injection and it has electronic ignition you know i think they're just a great motor too um, but these commands are a great motor but anyway so i was wondering why such a low hour motor would um you know have this kind of problem and you know i checked the oil it's kind of low but i got to looking at it and this oil filter was not tight enough and it, you can see it's it stripped all the oil there and it's it's made a mess there but so it got low in oil and the connecting rod busted so let that be a lesson always make sure your oil filter is tight enough that it's not leaking but you don't need to crank on it so hard that you'll never get it back off but so this is what we're going to be tearing into today and um let's go ahead and see if we can't get it in the garage Alright, so I got it here in the garage and I guess we'll go ahead and get this motor torn off of here. Hope that nothing else is broke on the inside. And um we'll get this off so they take it off. Um you got your throttle and your choke cable. Um, they're right here. Um uh, this is your uh choke cable and your throttle cables on this side here. They're just uh, two 516s bolts. Um, you got your starter wire right here. It's just a half inch nut. Um, the engine harness plug, that should just pull apart right here. Um, got your fuel line. 
you'll just need a pair of pliers to get that clamp off and um, that's pretty much it for the top side so on the bottom side you got your clutch there that's just gonna be a 5 8 bolt um, up straight through the middle of the crankshaft you're gonna have to take that belt off it'd probably be easier to um, take it off the front of the deck first and then you got your drive pulley there you're gonna have to take that belt off looks like there's a set screw there and that should pull off then you got your four engine bolts um they're gonna be a half inch and that'll be nut and bolted so we're gonna go ahead and oh you got one bolt that holds the muffler there too um on the frame but yeah we're gonna go ahead and uh get this torn off here all right so i got the motor off i put it here on the engine building stand and i already went ahead and drained the oil out of it it's just a 10 millimeter for the drain right there uh, drained all that out but we're going to go ahead and uh get this muffler here off it is just four half inch nuts um right here and i uh, got the muffler off uh, make sure not to lose your exhaust manifold gaskets and some they also have this other little insert in here sometimes they fall out just make sure to not lose that but it didn't fall out this time so we're going to go ahead and get this spun around here and set it up here like this. we're going to um, take this cover here off it's got three t20 torques there and we'll go ahead and pull the screen that's under that off that's just four 10 millimeter bolts right there all right so i got them off uh we take this uh screen off uh, make sure you don't lose these little studs here and there's also washers that press up against uh, the flywheel in between there just make sure you don't lose them we're going to go ahead and uh, get this uh, air cleaner air filter assembly off of here so it's a half inch uh, nut and bolt there and then under that you're going to have uh, two five sixteenths one here and one on the other side two ten so we can just pull this whole thing right off and then there's going to be two Phillips screws um, right there once you get this off. So instead of uh, taking these two 5 16 bolts out, I actually just took uh, the four 5 16 bolts out on um, that hold uh, this plate on and uh, um, valve cover here. And then uh, you're also going to have to take this breather off. It's just two 5 16 bolts right here, a little clamp that goes around it. And... Uh, pulled the um, gas line off right here from the fuel pump to the carburetor so we can just uh, go ahead and uh, pull this whole shebang off of here and um, then we're going to get on to pulling the um, pulling the cover off it's just got um, four tens here in the front and it's got four five sixteenths around the side you got this uh, oil cooler here and uh, it's got a 10 up top and a 10 on the bottom we'll pull this off um, I'm gonna have to take this uh, throttle and choke assembly apart we already got the two Phillips that went here and uh, you just got a 10 here it's got this little um, bracket here a spring and a washer under there and then uh, we can pull this flywheel um, fan out and then you're gonna have to unplug uh, this uh, charging wires there. So I got this cover ready to pull off. I forgot to mention uh, there's uh, 5 16 bolts that holds this um, dipstick on that you're gonna need to uh, take off to get to that bolt that holds the cover on. So we're gonna pull this uh, cover right here off. You're also gonna have to take the vacuum uh, hose off for on the fuel pump there sit that there sit this flywheel cover here and um, we're gonna pull flywheel off now that's a, I believe it's a 13 millimeter there half inch um, for that center bolt there we're gonna um, pull the two cools off that's two five sixteens right there we're gonna leave all that right there just hanging um, now we're gonna take this bolt out and to get the flywheel off you know, take a pry bar probably stick it right about right there 
and after I loosen this bolt up we're gonna hit it in there leave the bolt pretty far in just a little gap there we're gonna hit it with the hammer a couple times after we hit the pry bar in and it should pop right off all right the flywheel popped right off um, a lot of tear down required in this in this uh, job here but that's okay um, now we're going to um, pull the pan off it's got what two four um, six eight ten ten millimeter bolts there we're gonna have to pull out for the pan um, you're gonna have to take this drain tube off to uh, get to one of them that will just twist out um, all right so I got the pan pulled off um, you might just have to take a little screwdriver and uh, pry in there but it should uh, pop right off it's really about what I expected uh, a bunch of broken pieces in there some all still um, you know luckily it looks like uh, nothing else is really broke um, there's a little bit of scrapage there but no holes in the block nothing like that camshaft isn't broken everything else looks pretty good for the most part um, the pan here it's got a bunch of shavings in it I don't know if you can really see it but um, got all kinds of shavings in there we'll have to uh, clean that out but um, overall it looks um, pretty solid pretty rebuildable still got all that junk uh, out of the bottom there drained out and to uh, get the camshaft out we're going to take um, these valve covers here off and um, then we're going to take the rocker arms loose Pull them off, pull the uh, push rods out, repeat, same thing on this side. Now, camera shaft should pop right out. Maybe not. Get the pliers, turn it out so much. sweet spot pop that out okay got your lifters there it'll fall down but um so we got our one connecting rod that's still um intact there we're gonna take these two bolts out 10 millimeter pop that cap off and we're gonna twist it to the top the connecting rods at the top we're gonna leave it there pull the crankshaft back down and pop that out now it is important to monitor um, which way this cap goes back on here because they are directional so um, just keep in mind which way you can look at it and figure it out usually um, it's on one side it's kind of beveled where it hits up to the one side of the crankshaft and it's the opposite on the other side but um, just you know when you're putting it back together note that it will go on one way and not the other so i got that popped off there check out the bearing a little bit um it looks to be in uh good condition still usable um go ahead and get this set back up we're going to twist it, the crankshaft, so that the um, piston is at top dead center. We're just going to leave it there. Alright, so I got the crank pulled out. And uh, as you can see, there's all kinds of um, chunk right there on the um, part where the connecting rod rides. And um, we're going to get that all cleaned up with... Uh, some sandpaper and some memory cloth get it all polished up break clean and make sure we get it all real 
cleaned out real good through all the out oil galleries um through you know, the crankshaft here throughout the pan okay so i got the block pretty well cleaned out so i got the piston pulled down here as you can uh, see and there's a little clip that holds the wrist pin in take a little screwdriver a little pick pull that out then we'll pull that um wrist pin out and we'll put the new rod in pop that pin out i just uh used a pair of needle nibs pliers to pull it out i uh put the new used connecting rod back in make sure i put that wrist pin clip back in and uh it is pretty important to make sure you get all the shavings out of the bottom of the motor. Um, the uh, front seal up there sometimes holds some stuff and there's a couple oil galleries. Just make sure you blow them out with some brake clean or some air. Got my, poly my crank uh, polished up right here. Um, threw some uh, assembly lube on it already. And we'll go ahead and stick that in there. So I got the crank in. It takes a little bit of finessing, but you can do it. I'm going to put these uh, rod caps on and throw the crank, uh, camshaft in. So I got the rod caps on, and we're going to put this uh, camshaft in. Uh, you want to make sure your lifters are pushed up in a block. There's a little dot on the um, gear on the crankshaft, and a little dot here on the camshaft so you just gotta make sure you line them up and, uh, and that'll drop in there like so so i'm gonna go get the pan um i'm gonna put some rtv around this and um we'll throw that on here all right so i got the uh, rtv put on and uh put the pan back on now uh, you might have to twist the crankshaft a little bit and uh wiggle it around a little bit to get the pan to seat correctly but uh i'm gonna tighten these bolts up and um put the um rocker arms and push rods back on and the valve covers all right so i got the plugs drain plugs put back in the pan i put the uh, um rocker arms push rods back on they're real simple it's a hydraulic lifter so you don't have to adjust the valves or anything you don't have to have any clearances so we're going to go ahead and uh, throw the flywheel back on put the coals back on and start wrapping this puppy up the coals are real simple to put back on there's no adjustment so you can just bolt them straight back up i got the uh, flywheel fan here and um i'm gonna throw a cover back here on all right so i went ahead and uh Put this bracket back on that holds the air filter. I put the choke and throttle bracket back on. And all that's left to do is just uh, put this breather back on, put this cover on, and put the muffler on. And we'll put it back on the motor. All right, so I went ahead and threw the muffler back on. I put the whole motor back on, bolted it back on. Just four bolts, the dry pulley, the belts, the clutch. Uh, starter wire, throw on choke cable, um, uh, fuel line, and uh, we're going to see if this, uh, if this will fire up right here. So there you have it guys. I uh, backed it out of the garage. Seems to be running fine. Sounds pretty healthy. And uh, see if it'll cut some grass.